Well, South Africa has potentially one of the world's largest untapped shale gas reserves with an estimated 390 trillion, cu trillion cubic feet stored in the Karoo. Uh, some analysts estimate that around 10% of this gas could be extracted, which could provide us with a supply for decades of power generation. There have also been substantial interest in offshore exploration from big oil majors such as Total and Sasol holding exploration permits. But joining us to discuss the potential of these sectors and the challenges that is hampering exploration is Aldworth Mbalati, Chief Executive of Delta Natural Gas and Chris Bredenhan, Africa Oil and Gas Advisory Leader at PwC, joining us from our Cape Town studio. Chris, let me start with you right there in Cape Town. Uh, obviously, you've heard about these gas reserves from uh, the east of the continent, uh, also the likes of Mozambique. Uh, so tell us, in the gas play, where does South Africa sit? Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, uh, yes, certainly the, the developments in, in East Africa, specifically in Mozambique and, and Tanzania, are large-scale developments uh, and, and, and are world-scale. Uh, in South Africa, as you mentioned in the introduction as well, there, there, there's, there's the potential of both onshore and offshore development as well. And uh, I, I think that the, the stage of development for South Africa needs to be taken into account if we want to, to look at the industry and, and how it could develop going forward. So we, we have a small developed uh, natural gas industry, specifically driven by Petro SA as the national oil company with an offshore gas field that, that's coming to the end of its life, um, and Sasol through importing gas from Mozambique as well. The, the, the potential of this industry developing, I think, hinges around some offshore developments that, that, are, uh, uh, that, that uh, the majors are interested in, in developing, as well as the, the shale gas opportunity. And I, I, I know that, that there's always talk about the size of the, the shale gas opportunity in, in South Africa, and, and uh, it, it's been uh, rated down a little bit from initially about 485 TCF to 390 and, and the estimate of 10% I, th uh, I think has, has come into, uh, into various discussions as well. The, the size of it relative to our needs I think is important and, uh, to, to consider and, and I think what, we, what, what I'm trying to say is that, that even, even a fraction of the, the 390 or uh, uh, even a, a 1 to 10 TCF reserve base that, that, that could be extracted would make a difference in, in the energy mix in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So certainly there's, there's both upstream, offshore and onshore potential for the country. Um, let me bring you into this conversation, Aldworth, because uh, we know that you are a player in this particular sector. The, uh, this industry of ours in South Africa is still very much growing, but the Department of Energy has certain things in place. They call the Gas uh, Utilization Master Plan. Um, how is that going? Are you finding that these uh, measures, these uh, regulatory mechanisms are helping the industry? Well, certainly. I mean, our government has woken up to the fact that in order to achieve the objectives that they have set for themselves in terms of creating more jobs, in terms of making sure that South Africa is sustainable. They are trying to find great mechanisms in terms of coming up with legislate, legislation or frameworks that empower uh, the nation. So the gas utilization master plan, which is yet to be uh, brought out to the public, sets to achieve and create an enabling environment for players like ourselves to participate in an environment which is conducive. So we believe it is something that we're looking forward to. Hmm. Uh, Chris, let me come back to you. Uh, earlier on, you spoke about uh, South Africa possibly uh, being an importer of gas there. Just uh, give us uh, some reference around that. How would this work? And uh, in terms of us having the correct infrastructure in place, uh, what are we doing in order to become a real player here? Yes, the, the, uh, you've put your finger on, on potentially on, on the, the major stumbling block in terms of importing gas and, and, and that would be uh, the, the infrastructure environment. So existing infrastructure in terms of importing gas uh, sits mainly with, with a, a, a pipeline from Mozambique to, to South Africa that, that feeds uh, uh, Sasol and, and, and the downstream needs of, of its customers as well. 
Um, <coughs> we, we are enabling, we, we are embarking on a process at the moment around uh, uh, the uh, gas to power industry in South Africa. And that, that uh, initiative under the Department of Energy's Independent Power Producers program is, is really built around the, uh, uh, the importation of natural gas into South Africa. Uh, the, the request for information that the department has issued also talks about compressed natural gas and, and, and other f sources, both domestic and imported gas. But I think uh, if, if we're going to be developing over the short to medium term a gas industry in South Africa, uh, it, it will be developed off the back of, of importing natural gas. And that importation of natural gas will be in the form of uh, liquefied natural gas uh, that, that we would be able to procure off uh, in, in, in the open market. Um, there's been significant global developments in the natural gas space with a lot of reserves being proven and uh, those, those gas reserves being monetized through, through the, the technology to liquefy and transport the gas that, that is far away from markets. Um, so so the, the options available to South Africa in terms of supply of natural gas is, is quite wide. Um, with large developments in East Africa, but also in Australia, and, and, and large reserves also found in the, in the Middle East and the shale revolution in, in the US, and North America also contributing to, to, an, to a generally uh, well-supplied market. Uh, it does, however, require us from a, from a local point of view to identify how and where we're going to bring this gas into the country and what the mechanisms are going to be to, to do that and the infrastructure requirements. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do it uh, quickly, then, then you, you, you will be looking at um, uh, floating solutions. If you, want, if, if you have a bit more time, then, then clearly land-based terminals and, and a few options exist in, uh, and, and are being considered in South Africa, ranging from Saldana Bay through Chris, to Richards Bay. Chris, let me and, stop you there. Um, so Kuka. I just want to get so, yeah, an input from Aldworth because you mentioned uh, importation that we do uh, in South Africa are mm -hmm. uh, potential gas reserves, shale gas in the Karoo. Uh, are we likely to see any exploration and production happening there? Well, there's a good probability. South Africa is very good at making the right choices for itself. Clearly, I mean, the debate has been centered around can we do this in an environmentally friendly way? Can we do this in such a way that benefits our country? If the answer is yes, I don't see a reason why not. And if those challenges can be mitigated, I don't see a reason why not. However, all of those things should be addressed first. And I guess uh, the meeting of the minds will actually determine whether that comes to pass or not. So I don't have a crystal ball, but what I stand for is that I stand for the future of South Africa and I stand that our kids tomorrow have a proper legacy and whatever it is, depending on the debates that are going on, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see in time in terms of what happens. Mm. Um, Chris, let me come to you just to get uh, closing comments from both you and Aldworth uh, in as, as, as short a time as you possibly can. If we look at gas versus uh, other renewable energy sources, uh, which one is a lot more cost effective? Um, I, I, I think clearly the, uh, from a renewables point of view, the cost of, of uh, renewables have, have been decreasing over time. Similarly, gas prices have also decreased and I think the, the answer lies in wh what is the energy mix and how do you balance the energy mix and, and what, what is the purpose of renewables versus coal for baseload versus potentially um, gas that, that could play a role in peaking and, and providing mid-merit solutions as well. So it's, it's all in the mix. Uh, and and uh, costs are going down as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Aldworth, just closing comments from you when it comes to the energy mix and the role of gas there. I believe gas beats everything hands down. Reason being, one, it is one of the forms of energy that you can deploy rapidly and South Africa cannot afford not to have an energy solution that allows us to maintain our credit rating, that allows to keep us jobs in play, that allows us to make sure that we have more power into the grid in order to power economic growth. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, qu the, the losses that you endure from that are just too grave to give any other technology more priority. So I advocate for gas. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Of course, uh, Chris in Cape Town and Aldworth right here in our Johannesburg studios in Santon.